It's a beautiful day here in East Lansing. The stakes are high for both teams. They both want to win because if you're Iowa, you would be in the Big Ten tournament. And for Michigan State, you would be sitting at the top regular season co-Big Ten champs once again. And you get a look at that starting lineup right there. Dalton Mueller, Cox, Wick is... And then you got the Justina and Celia Gaynor, Emerson Sargent, Bella Najera, Hellier, and Illig. The only person that's out for today for Michigan State is Mackenzie Anthony. Now we get a look at the Iowa starting lineups as well. For them, the stakes are high. They want to make that Big Ten tournament top eight make it. Bush, Carey, Patterson, Otto, Durr, Doherty, Leitz, Rowling, Greer, Johnston. The start is off here in East Lansing. For Michigan State, stakes are very high, and they've been here in this situation before, but this is this is a big one because you got to remember they had clinched before the final game last year, and they were able to take down Rutgers, but still, this is a big one, and they're ready for this test. And a lot of these players have been in the spots before, but there have been some transfers as well. One of those is Gabby Mueller, who you're going to see near that middle. Entering early into that box is Michigan State, and then... It will be booted away, so we'll have our first corner kick of the afternoon. And just for the stakes for the other side, Penn State has not lost a single game yet this year, but they do have three conference ties. So that's what Michigan State is going to be watching for. Booted towards that middle, solid entry, and then Gabby Mueller will go collect it outside the box. Poke back in the sergeant. And then Dalton will bounce it right into the hands of Enna King. She did not have any saves against Michigan. One goal allowed, but they did have a draw one-to-one. -one. Put them in this situation on the road, always tough. And now you have to go to East Lansing, and it's not an easy place to play. And Owen, I think you did a really good job talking about how the high stakes for Michigan State, but it's also a very big game for Iowa today. In case you don't know, the top eight teams qualify for the Big Ten tournament with the top four teams set to host. And right now, Iowa is seated at eighth. Yep, and there's a few scenarios with that eight spot as well, and they're, they're going to get figured out. But for Iowa, you want to control your own destiny, and victory here would be massive for them. Yeah, Caitlin, Caitlin Parks and Macy Enneking are the two goalkeepers for today. There's going to be far and few opportunities more than likely, and each team knows that every single shot is going to be a big one. For Jeff Hosler, obviously, wants his team to be focused heading into this one, and it's a big one. Weather is definitely cooled down, but it's a packed stadium here at DeMartin Field. They've been playing some good soccer as well. Here's Sophia Bush, and then turn back over to Michigan State, and that one will be booted out. You can see Michigan State's trying to move with some momentum down the pitch. Been a lot of action near that middle. And here's Reagan Cox ready to throw in. She was on this team last year as well. Emerson Sargent, she was big coming off the bench last year, has been a staple in that starting lineup. Into that box will be booted out once again. Another corner kick for Michigan State. They do get a lot of opportunities with these. Is there anything early, Lexi, that you're looking for for either side to do? For Iowa, really one of the big things will be defense this game because we know Michigan State has such a strong attack and such a strong offensive end that Iowa's really going to have to focus on defense. It will be a big one. As you see, there's our key player, Justina Gaynor. 5'8", senior from Shelby Township. Transfer from Butler. Going to hop in there towards that middle, and it squirts in! 1-0 Michigan State early in this one. That's how you set the tempo on Championship Sunday. What a job by the Spartans on the corner kick. Got loose out front. Hit a couple of people and then bounced in. Let's take another look. I think it was Illig that got that final touch in. And it sure looks like it. What a job. Just pokes it right over Enneking. Not a lot of power on it, but threw a change up in there and it gets in. What a job. 
just three minutes and 33 seconds in, and Michigan State is off to a good start. Just underway at Penn State as well. They're still scoreless. But Michigan State with some early tempo. Lexi, you talked about that defense. Now you've really got to step up if you're Iowa. Chasing it over to the corner is Carey as it rolls out. They're going to credit Justina Gaynor and Emerson Sargent with the assist. And we talked about it, but Justina Gaynor, key player coming in, and she's already made an impact. I think a big thing with that is the mindset I mentioned previously. You know, she is a senior. She wants to win. Yep. She has that mindset coming to this game, and we just saw it. Absolutely, and that's absolutely massive to start a game. Hausler likes to get things going and really set the tempo because you can work at a much better pace when you're ahead as Justina Gaynor now with 18 points on the season. She leads the team with 10 assists, and she's really stepped up in a big way. Popped up in the air. A lot of action has come in that middle of the field until now as Iowa's trying to control it in their own end. Ellie Otto was one of those players to touch it. She's been massive for them at the top four points of the standings. And for Iowa, obviously, you fall behind early. What do you have to do now to get right and try to tie this back up? For Iowa, really, you're just going to have to put a lot of pressure on. I've, I've been liking what I've seen with the pressure so far. They are being aggressive. They just had that one slip up in the box. And it was a big one, but you can't let that sort of thing go to your head. Is here some good momentum going the other way for Iowa? Poked ahead for them, but then Parks was able to boot it right back up. Aggressively coming out, that was a big play right there. And for keepers, I mean, she obviously had to fill in to start off this year as Lauren Kozo moved on professionally. And now Parks gets in, transfer from Wake Forest, and she's been massive. And now you have, in this kind of big game, you really have to step up and show what you are. For her to be able to come out of the box like that and challenge the forward, that shows confidence. Yeah, I mean, especially in this sort of game, those players that aren't as confident, you can tell when they'll play back and just let it come to you. That's big time to step up. Iowa trying to control it as we'll be booted back towards that middle of the field. As it lands back down for ro rolling. Michigan State trying to get it back. Dalton kind of got in the way of her own player right there as Hellier was trying to get rid of it. And for Jeff Osler, I mean, we talked about already, but this is exactly what he wanted. He's been in the spot. A lot of these players have been here as well. There are a couple of transfers and freshmen, but, I mean, there's a good core still here from last year that has the experience of winning. And for them this year, no matter what happens today, they want to go on a run in this postseason. Entering into the box, dangerous play right here for Eliado. Blocked up front by Dalton. Was it a handball? No call. Mueller trying to get rid of it and will be blown the other way for Michigan State's ball. You know, you talked about the team, and I think they really set the bar above and beyond last year with winning the Big Ten tournament and being champs. Yep. And for Hosler, he talked about how there was a lot of firsts last year, but now this year it's about repeating, and they have that chance today. Obviously, hasn't been as dominant as last year because of how good Penn State's been, but they've definitely done the job to put themselves on the final day in a spot where they can possibly be, once again, Big Ten title champs. And Michigan State is a young team. You know, they're still trying to figure out how to work together and work with each other, figure mm -hmm. out each other's style of play. And I think they've done a really great job this year doing that, yeah. being so young. Yeah, and absolutely. And you got players like Gabby Mueller. Her first game here as a Spartan after transferring over from Baylor, she's making an impact, scoring right away. It's that sort of thing where Hosler wanted to be a transfer portal friendly team. And he's done a really nice job, obviously, when these players like Justina Gaynor move on. You're going to have to replace them, and they're going to have to go back into the portal once again. Stone away on that far side. Here's a good chance for Iowa. Doherty, as it's popped up by Celia Gaynor. She's been fantastic as well, the sister of Justina Gaynor. 
as Justina is able to control it right there. Najera, she's been winning awards left and right for Michigan State this year. As Iowa once again controls. Maggie Johnson, 5'6", senior, trying to poke it to the far side, but Reagan Dalton was there to jump on it. Here's Eberson Sargent. Trying to work towards that attacking third into the box. Good move from far out, but right into the hands of Macy Enneking. One goal against her already. That was at the 333 mark early in this one. But another chance, and she makes the save. One thing Michigan State does a really good job of is getting those numbers forward into the box. I mean, you see the midfielders hustling upfield to get in that box to support her in case she needs to pass it. For Iowa, you can see there's a little bit more urgency to start than before that goal. But for them, obviously, we already talked about they want to win as well. Here's Samantha Carey going to roll it near side. That's Morgan Leitz. Iowa trying to methodically work into their attacking third. Deflected. And here's Maggie Johnson trying to fight for it. Reagan Dalton controls. Back again towards that middle. Trying to work it out of the defending third for Michigan State. And here's Reagan Cox, one of the leaders on this team for Michigan State. She's been a staple in that starting lineup for a while. Headed back again. Now Iowa controls. Way to intercept that by Reagan Cox. She'll boot it towards that middle again. Wickes. Tripped up with Sargent, no call though. And Iowa was able to pick her pocket. That was Sophia Bush. Here's Gaynor, she's gonna roll it back to Parks. You can see how far she's playing out early. Very aggressive approach by Michigan State. And for Caitlin Parks, the 5'7 grad transfer from Wake Forest, like we talked about, she's gonna have to make some big saves as well. Here's Reagan Cox. Towards that middle again, there's Sargent, but Anna King was on top of it. Iowa trying to work quickly. You can see a lot of flowing momentum both ways. Here's Doherty. Already into the attacking third for the Hawkeyes. Will be poked back to her in front of the MSU bench. And kind of a missed touch right there. Parks is there to collect it. Still scoreless between Penn State and Wisconsin. one nothing here. It was that early goal by Maggie Illig. There's a chance it could be the winner, but we still got a long way to go. Illig, the 5'7 sophomore from Troy, Michigan. Or Minnesota, excuse me. How much subbing do you think Michigan State will do in this sort of game? We know we know Hosser likes to play his best numbers out there, but he also understands that when these girls' legs get tired, they need a quick sub. Whether he puts somebody in for five minutes, he puts them in for ten minutes, he's going to make sure they get their break they need. So he will he will utilize his bench. Should be interesting to watch out for. Here's Renee Watson, the first substitution for Michigan State. We haven't seen any for Iowa yet. And she's gonna throw in for the Spartans. Back towards that corner. Sergeant trying to work around, pressed up against, and it'll be another throw in. Kind of slowing down just a little bit here. 32 and a half to play in the first half. Iowa coming in this one in three, three and three in Big Ten conference play. Been just good enough to sit at that eight spot in the standings. Here's Celia Gaynor, back towards that middle. Popped up in the air by Sophia Bush. We got a foul against the Spartans. Three fouls to two now. Iowa, more fouls in that, court, in that category. Two corners for MSU, two shots on goal as well for the Spartans. Iowa does not have any. And here's Maggie Johnston. Set piece opportunity, but from pretty far out. Booted towards that box, looking for a header 
Not going to get it. But back to Iowa. Trying to control it. And we got a whistle going the other way. Now look at this one. Here's Parks towards the Iowa bench and it was a tough play to make for Gaynor to keep that in. Does look like we might have our first substitution for Iowa coming in in a moment. There's Johnston. Samantha Carey. She's had her fair share of awards as well this season for the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes do control. Here's into the box. And Celia Gaynor was all over that entry right there. She's trying to look towards that middle. Sergeant Emerson Sergeant can't save it from going out. Is there anything defensively you're looking for for Michigan State to be able to shut down these Hawkeyes? Defensively, you know, they had a slip up early on against Illinois last week, and I think they've been able to cap like review that. It was just a mistake. You know, they just got caught slipping, caught lacking a little bit. They were caught off of a quick transition by them, and I think they have to be aware of that because I've seen Iowa try to do a quick transition on them a couple times so far. You're walk, working along that far side, is rolling. Defender in front of her face. It's popped up and again. Here's Sophia Bush from far out, deflects off of one of her own players. That's Maggie Johnston. And then Parks is able to field that on a hop. Ellie Otto was the leader in points for this team. Not able to get a clean look at it. Defense is right in her face and was right into the goalkeeper's hands. Under 30 to play in this first half. It was the Michigan State goal early that really set that tempo. Still scoreless between Penn State and Wisconsin. Here's Justina Gaynor. Reagan Cox. I miss you trying to Find a hole in this Iowa defense, working it forward. Cox gonna find Jordan Wickes towards that corner. Wickes, the 5'9 junior, has come off the bench, but it can be a spark plug, and they gave her the start today. Cox is gonna walk over the throw in. Tempo's kinda slow down for both teams. Do you think is that just because of how fast they were going early? When Michigan State got the lead, you know, they don't have to rush anymore. They kind of just have to be composed, keep the ball in possession, while, you know, Iowa is still trying to get a goal. Mm -hmm. But Michigan State is clearly controlling the possession of the ball right now. So they're setting the pace in the entire game. There's a foul right there in Dalton. She's not happy with that call. Another look. Kind of looked like it was Johnson that lost her footing. But nonetheless, that's the call from the officials. Here's a lead from far out from the wing as it will be headed back out, throw in for the Hawkeyes. They'll kind of get an opportunity to get set here. For players to watch to possibly make an impact today offensively, it's Josie Durr and Ellie Otto who lead this team each with 12 points and Rowling has 11. Five goals each for Durr and Otto. They've definitely are on watch to make an impact here. As it's gonna be Samantha Carey, the fifth year, to throw in from that corner. Trying to get into the box and they do, but Michigan State's right there. Dalton's gonna boot it back out. Greer all the way back and I will kind of reset, trying to work once again, towards that middle, 
Good defensive play right there by Justina Gaynor. She, Justina Gaynor, we talked about how she can be a leader, but also her energy as well on the pitch can make a big difference in a game like this. Even when you're getting tired, she's going to always bring it. It's that mindset. It always goes back to that mindset I mentioned before the game. You know, she has that strong mindset. She has a leadership min mindset, and as well as her sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this year, Hosler chose not to go with any captains. He said he once made the mistake of choosing captains, and then it kind of turned into a popularity contest. But he says it gives an opportunity for more players on this team to be leaders, and they definitely have. And it's obviously not the same squad from last year, but they're doing it in their own sort of way as well. That's Carey. He's going to boot it right back towards the middle. And there's Gaynor with it. Trying to play it down as Emerson Sargent. As Carey made contact with her. Sargent's a little slow to get up. Foul on Iowa. Kind of grabbing at that right ankle for a second. Looks like she's okay, though. So it's going to be Sargent and Bella Najera. 5'5 five, five freshman. She's been... Such an addition to this team. Sergeant quickly. Going to poke it out. Reagan Cox. Trying to be sneaky with it towards that middle. Headed right to Anna King. Not a bad thought right there for Michigan State. Doesn't go in, but another good opportunity early for the Spartans. Macy Anakin, 5'9", senior. She's been in a few big games like this and obviously has already let in one goal, wants to stop Michigan State the rest of the way and hope that her offense can step up. Get a look at those saves right there. Currently 2-1. to one. Parks has that one, and then Anakin has two. Three shots on goal for Michigan State. One has gone in. It was Illig with the first goal. Here's Emerson Sargent towards that corner. Carries right on top of her, as well as Leeds. Trying to change directions is Emerson Sargent, and then was looking for Mueller. Good defensive play by Josie Dirt. Right back to Iowa, but it was a good stop to slow down that momentum. Trying to go to that far side, and Illig's going to boot it out. It's a smart decision right there. You look at Jeff Hosler right there in his third season. Already has been champs once. Look at that win-loss record as well. Absolutely fantastic. What a hire by Michigan State to bring him in. And, it, I mean, he, it's made a world of a difference here. He, he really wants to make Michigan State a spot in the NCAA for women's soccer, and he's doing a nice job already of that. And I think he does a really strong job on rec the recruiting end as well. He's bringing in such incredible freshmen, such incredible new faces to this team in this yeah. program. And there's Dave Diani right there in his 10th season as Iowa head coach. You can see he also has a good win-loss record. And he's been in plenty of games like these before. And it's about being confident with your team because, yes, they're down 1-0, but still plenty of time. To come back in this one. Here's Maggie Johnston with a throw in. Johnston again. Entry into that box. But Dalton was on top of that one. We'll boot it right back out. Anything offensively right here to look for for Iowa? Iowa just needs to get in that 18 box. They've been able to get in there a couple times. But they haven't been able to make a threatening opportunity yet on the goal. And Gabby Mueller. Nice defensive play right there. It seems like Michigan State's defense really stepping up early. And have some more substitutions in a moment. As Mueller trying to chase it down, transfer from Baylor, trying to work through defenders. Emerson Sargent ends up with it, but then Pattinson able to roll it back out. Now we will have that substitution for Michigan State. Looks like we're going to have Lavovich come in. Out comes Renee Watson. Levovich has plenty of experience starting for MSU. 
She's one of those more veteran players as well. 5'6", senior. 21-40 to play in this first half. Still scoreless between Penn State and Wisconsin. So everything going right for the Spartans at the moment. Be headed back out into the Michigan State bench. And obviously you don't want to score Borla to watch if you're the Spartans, but I mean you're going to take a couple of sneaky looks over there just to see what that score is. Like I mentioned, you know, their biggest thing right now is just composing the ball, keeping the ball. They don't have to make a rush decision. They have to make the best decision right now. You've got to look at Macy Enneking. She's a really good goalkeeper in this conference as well. So that one sails out. So Iowa's going to move into their attacking third. Pattinson, one of those freshmen on this team, will throw in. As Otto, leader in points towards that middle, and Celia Gaynor was right there. Anytime it looks like they're trying to get it inside that box, Michigan State's right there to pounce on top of it. Whether it's Dalton or Celia Gaynor. Michigan State's been doing their job. There's Maggie Illig. She had that first goal really set the tempo for Michigan State early. Trying to roll it back. Gabby Mueller are going to head it up in the air. It looked like that was out, and it was. Looks like we also got a substitution for Iowa coming in in a moment. Looks like it's McGordy right there. Bring her in in a second. Here's Dalton. And Regan Dalton, 5'6", senior as well. She's another player. that She's a leader on this team. She's really stepped up in some big spots. And expect her to do that again today because she wants to get another crack at that title. She's so strong in the midfield. I mean, she's able to transition the ball, see the entire field, quick transition. She's just such a dominant player in the midfield. You want her in your midfield. Absolutely. And she's been... Such a big presence for MSU. No call right there as Wickus was trying to get it through defenders. Back to Celia Gaynor. Gonna poke it to the corner. Can Cox get there in time? She can't. Let her just a little bit too far on that touch. Michigan State spent a lot of time in this far corner this game. Indeed, and they really like to attack it with Cox. It feels like done that a lot this season. She's a really good player that can set up some opportunities for MSU. Cox, once again, another transfer. She came over from Arkansas. Macy Enneking. Trying to get it towards that middle. Celia Gaynor, nice header. But then right back to Iowa. Fighting for a position right in the middle of the field. Dalton's going to choose to play it out. Just over 18 minutes left in this first half. One shot on goal for the Hawkeyes. Three for Michigan State. As Gaynor trying to find Wickes. She's got some good speed. We'll slow it down for a moment as the defenders are on top of her. Mueller's going to go to the near side to Celia Gaynor. Going to play it ahead to Cox this time. Trying to poke it around that defender, Carey. Goes the end line and then running into Emerson Sargent was Macy Enneking to make that grab. Good work right there by the goalkeeper. You just talked about Cox's ability to get down to that corner. We just saw again mm -hmm. that quick speed all the way from the back line. It's something that's worked for them before, and if it's not broke, don't fix it. You look at Reagan Dalton right there. We talked about her already, but once again, I mean, you have those leaders out there, and 
it's been interesting to also see. Last year, Emerson Sargent was one of those freshmen. She's really developed as a sophomore, and you can fully expect as a junior, she's going to play a major role with some players leaving, too. Towards that box, we'll be headed out. Iowa trying to control it. That's Sophia Bush. And then Otto trying to work again. Does get inside, but Parks is right there to fall on top of it. Once again, just a wall of defensive players right there. Get a look at 34 saves. Good save percentage as well for Caitlin Parks. Had big boots to fill, and she's really done it. Under 16 now to play in this first half. It was early in this one that Maggie Illig had that first goal. We're going to have a Michigan State substitution. Looks like it's Andrews. Indeed it is. She's getting warm, obviously. I mean, you used to play soccer. It's definitely colder out here. It's just below 50s. How important is it to get warm and stay warm so you can come in and make an immediate impact. You have to continuously be moving this type of weather. It is so important to keep your legs warm, not even just for soccer, but for any sport. You want a warm body going into the game. So to go off for a couple of seconds, you have to keep moving. Mm -hmm. And coming back from half, that's going to be hard for all of the girls out there because they had that 15-minute rest. And see, Andrews is like constantly hopping around, trying to stay warm as well. And Obviously, if you're playing out there, you're going to be moving a lot. And here's Reagan Cox, who's been doing a lot for Michigan State. Here's Jordan Wickets towards that middle. Trying to split defenders into the box. Pokes it to Emerson Sargent, the sophomore. Good move right there. And Carey falling over. Here's back towards the middle, but headed away nicely. But right to Mueller. Little referee. Little referee <laughs> entanglement there. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Back to Labovich. Whoa, she just whiffed on it. It's going to turn into an opportunity for Iowa. It just looked like a misplay right there. Just totally whiffed on it. That could have been a very dangerous opportunity for Iowa, though. A quick 2v1 yeah. opportunity created. It's going to result in a, a yellow card as well for Labovich. You can see it's almost like when you have that free opportunity in basketball and you're just going to kind of follow them to stop them from getting an easy look. That's kind of what you do right there in that situation. You'll take that yellow card if you're Labovich. Here's Samantha Carey. As you said, Lexi, there was a whole lot of players going the other way for Iowa. Would have been very dangerous. Fifth year, boots it from far out to the attacking third. Looked like Illig might have gotten ahead on it. Mueller's playing aggressive. Gonna roll it back. And a king. 14 to play. Let's see if Iowa could try to tie this back up before halftime and if you're Michigan State, try to pad that lead. Good effort right there from Emerson Sargent. She's on top of that, all the way. You gotta love that hustle if you're Jeff Hosler. <laughs> Throw in for Justina Gaynor. MJ Andrews is going to come in for Emerson Sargent. Take a well-deserved break right there. Go look at those live score updates. Still scoreless between Wisco and Penn State. No shots on goal either for the Nittany Lions. That's the big one to watch out for. You get a look at that replay right there. Wickes trying to fight for it. Get a look at that. 1-0 at the moment. Trying to get into that box. Parks, you can see the aggression again. That was a dangerous play if got it if it just 
got a little bit further from her, could have been a wide open net. We talked about it earlier. She's just so confident getting to that ball. She's yeah. willing to put her body on the line. You can see Celia Gaynor was also a player in that, kind of putting her body out there, boxing out in that situation. Yes. Dalton, nice play. Good footwork from her. Gonna be headed out by Pattinson. Kind of poke towards the middle, not a bad touch, but Emerson Sargent read it well. So aggressive, you can see that energy. A lot of speed from her. Anakin gonna roll it back to Carey. Under 12. If there's Iowa, if you're Iowa, what are you trying to do to kind of feel good heading into halftime? If you didn't, if you just noticed, Michigan State made it really hard for Iowa because they didn't apply pressure. She didn't know what to do. They they put her in a bad position by not putting pressure on her. And that's interesting. Why would you do that in this situation, changing that up? You're so used to them coming and attacking you that you're getting ready. You're already anticipating passing the ball. By not applying the pressure, you, you confuse them. And they you, definitely did right there. You're absolutely right. And it was interesting because I haven't seen Michigan State do that yet this game until right then. And who makes that call? Usually is that a player thing? Is that a coach thing from the sideline? How does that happen? I think once you see a player lay off, it kind of goes, the rest of the players can see it, and they just adapt to that. Cox trying to get towards that middle again to the box. There's Mueller. She's dangerous from right here. Going to poke it back to Najira. Justina Gaynor. Going to roll it to her sister, Celia Gaynor. Defense on her back heels, looking for Cox in that corner. Kind of slow down there for a second, and it rolls out. Two saves for Enneken, one for Parks. It was Illig early with that 1-0 lead. Just over 10 and a half to play in this first half. Back towards that middle. Justina Gaynor is going to play it down. Looking for Andrews. It'll be whistled down. Justina Gaynor was on the ground. Looks like we're going to have three substitutions coming for Iowa in a moment. There's Illig. Trying to find Wickes. A lot of power on it. Is it going to roll out? Wickes trying to save it. Not a bad effort. But there's a goal kick. Now it looks like we will have those substitutions come in. Camille Welker is going to come in. Delaney Holty is also going to come in. You know, I think one thing to be considered today is the win factor. Can you see those flags? They're going crazy yep. today. And we just saw that ball go a little too far, and I think the win carried it. Absolutely. I mean, in shots, too, that's going to be a big thing to watch out for. That win could be the difference between hitting net and getting the post. Now right now, Michigan State is going with the win, and Iowa is going against the win. Yeah, and that would be interesting. Moving forward, obviously, you have to flip at halftime. Still nine to play. Weather can always play a factor, too. We already talked about how the cold can do different kinds of things. Carry right on top, top of that Big Ten logo. Under nine now. Near side. Trying to push it forward. Iowa, good opportunity. He's rolling. Cox on top of her, as well as Celia Gaynor. Good defense from her. What an aggressive job right there by Celia Gaynor, the sister of Justina Gaynor. And what a defensive play right again. And there's a reason why she was a big transfer coming over as well. Here's Najera. Michigan State, good work again. Missed touch from Wickes, turns it over. Trying to find rolling into that box, and what a defensive play by Lavovich. Laying out, sliding down, and yes, she had that miscue early, but really made up right there. 
You see she's exhausted from she sprinting to, all the way. Had to take a quick second right there. <laughs> Near Schuler from the corner. First corner for Iowa. Played out at the top. Good opportunity from Skiff and not much going right there. Another defensive stop for Michigan State. Sinhaji's going to come in. And so is Hargrave. We talked about substitutions and there's been a lot for Michigan State early. Just for making sure the players keep those fresh legs. Yeah. Especially in such an important game. And for some teams in this kind of big game, you might not see as many substitutions, but obviously for Michigan State, they are very deep. They feel like they have a lot of good players on this roster that can go out there and hold down the fort and possibly score again. Here's Hargrave, and she hits the deck hard. We got another yellow card. First one was on Labovich. This time on Iowa. Oh. Grab the sleeve a little bit right there. It was Mia Schuler from Northfield, Michigan. It's kind of a homecoming for her. Northfield is about an hour away. Justina Gaynor. Not enough on it to get it to her teammates, and Iowa gets it right back there. It's Kenzie Rowling. Trying to tap it towards that Michigan State bench. It's Leeds. And once again, there's Dalton. Good defensive work. What has impressed you so much about this Michigan State defense to hold that zero up on the scoreboard? I think you said it earlier. You described them as a brick wall back there earlier in the game, and we keep seeing it. And they're willing, like we mentioned, they're willing to put their their body on the yep. line. Basically, we've seen how many slide tackles already. Yeah, and we see, we've seen Dalton do it. We've seen Labovich come off the bench and do it. Just seen a Gainers out there on both sides making her impact felt. And once again, MSU, every time it feels like Iowa is right there ready to pounce, the Spartans are – doing a good job of reading those touches, too. There's not many holes in that back line. No, there's not. And obviously last year that was something they prided themselves about, and they've done another good job, even le losing some players to fill in for them and once again continue that trend. And I'm sure Hosler is planning to continue that into the future as well because, like they say, defense wins championships. Still scoreless between Wisconsin and Penn State. 1-0 here as Cox was grabbing Sophie Kincaid right there. It looks like we got another yellow card. Do you think that warrants a yellow card right there? There was definitely a little bit of grabbing, definitely a little bit, a little bit of shoulder holding there. But Cox is definitely going to argue right there. Yeah, that's what the referee is clearly saying right there. It was that grab. Take another look right here. Yep, there was definitely a little bit of grabbing there. Just that energy, just that aggression coming yeah. out a little bit. And it's that sort of game as well. You get a look at Sergio Gonzalez and the arrest of the officials. I've seen a few yellow cards already early in this one. I think everyone's energy is just a little up today with this game being so important. Yeah. And that can really bring an extra juice as well. Iowa doesn't want their season to be over. And for Michigan State, they want to be Big Ten regular season co-champs as well. It's a lot of emotion out here. Absolutely. Things like that are going to happen. Yeah. Things get more chippy, too. Obviously, this isn't like a rivalry game or anything like that. But when the stakes are high in a game, it just brings an extra mm -hmm. oomph to the game as well. And go far side. You got four... 20 left in this first half. We've been scoreless since the 333 mark when Illig was able to throw a change up into the net.
Looks like we're going to have another MSU substitution in a moment. Lavovich, one of those players that came in off the bench, just made some nice defensive plays. Fouls has been a big thing as well. We talked about this game, and there's already seven to six right now. Solid amount from each squad. I think we said it best. Though. I think emotions in this game kind of take over, and you just nothing's ever intentional. You know, the right. emotions just get the best of you. Iowa trying to control, and they're defending third, and that will go out right towards midfield. Here's that substitution coming in. It's Mia Hansen, 5'6", senior from, she was a transfer as well from Grand Valley State. There's a good relationship with Labovich as well. They're both big on TikTok, on social media, and you can certainly bet if Michigan State is able to be regular season Big Ten champs, they're definitely going to post to TikTok after this game. <laughs> Looks like I mean she has a player down. That was Dalton. Not, not sure what quite happened there. Looks, Looks like, like she was kind of pointing at her elbow or something. I think she was hoping for a foul. Back far side, Illig, and then Mia Hansen lets it roll out. Seen a lot of substitutions for both teams. It's McGrory. Back inside that box from MSU on top of it. Let's see if Iowa can control Bush. A lot of players down on the pitch at the moment. Slow to get up. Iowa still controls, though. That's Haji on top of it for MSU. Looked like Mueller tripped up Bush. And another foul on MSU. Got under 90 seconds to play in this first half. See right there some contact. Boot to boot right there. With a free kick like that, you have to make the decision whether you're going to go for a shot or whether you're going to aim for the far right corner of the six. Looks like Maggie Johnston is going to take the set piece. Pops it up towards that middle. Parks punched it away. I mean, she's going to go chase it down. It's going to be a throw in for Iowa. Still not done. The threat is not over at the moment. Throwing in a Schuler, And that one's going to roll out, and now MSU does get it back. Another good opportunity. It was interesting not trying to catch that one was Parks. It would be dangerous if there is a rebound with a player there as well. So we'll roll all the way back to Enning King. Clock's going to keep ticking, under 20 seconds. Johnston, forward. Labovich on the ground. Ten, nine, That's pretty much going to close out this first half. Lexi, any big takeaways? I just think Michigan State being able to come out, and you said the first three minutes and 20 seconds and score, really put a lot of momentum behind them. Yep, and it was Maggie Illig that who was able to score early at the 333 mark for Michigan State. no holes near the goal line so I was having a really tough time putting any shots on goal with them playing pretty tough Iowa currently has nine fouls MSU has seven fouls we've already got three different yellow cards issued to the teams MSU has two Iowa has one this should be a very interesting game for the remainder half stay tuned as we will go over some of the series history coming up on Big Ten Plus Th thanks, Renee. And like she was talking about when me and Lexi were talking about earlier about how 
big this game is for both teams for Michigan State if they win and Penn State either draws or loses they would be co-Big Ten champs it looks like Nebraska is going to win as well so they will be at the top as well but for Iowa the game that they're looking at is Rutgers and Northwestern because Northwestern currently out Rutgers at the seventh spot if Iowa wins they take care of their own destiny if Northwestern also loses then they would also be in so it's the eight spot top eight make the Big Ten tournament and that's currently where we stand here's Cox entering into the box for Michigan State look a handball right there I thought so at least I didn't, I don't know looks like Cox gonna get it back it was just over three and a half minutes into the game that we saw the first goal for Michigan State. That was Maggie Illig. And for Michigan State, obviously we talked about it, but they want to repeat as regular season Big Ten champs again. Obviously they would have a co in front of it with Nebraska in as well. But nonetheless, they would definitely take it. And for Penn State, we talked about they have not lost all year. They are currently tied at half with Wisconsin, and they do have three draws in conference play, so definitely possible. It's the way it's looking at the moment, but there's still a lot of time here, and there's still a lot of time there for things to change. Rutgers currently up 1-0, and at halftime, only... No, there's only one shot and none on goal for Penn State. Seven shots, three on goal for Wisconsin. So offensively, it's been the Badgers controlling that over there. But for here, it's been a back and forth affair like what Renee has said. A lot of fouls, a lot of yellow cards as well. Three shots on goal, one for Iowa. Those three for Michigan State. That's been a very close affair. Anything could happen. It was on that corner that Michigan State was able to score. Justina Gaynor and Emerson Sargent both were credited with assists on that goal. Back into that box, Michigan State defensively has also come up in a lot of big ways as well. There's Andrews to midfield trying to push the pace. Tied up with the defender right there. And it's blown dead for a foul. Pattinson was right in her way. The crowd is not too happy about that one. <laughs> Pro Michigan State crowd here, obviously. You can see a lot of contact through for that race of the ball. And that sort of thing's gonna happen. Here's Mueller, transfer from Baylor. Trying to get past midfield, there's Najera. Jero's been fantastic. Here's Mueller. She scored in her Spartan debut. That's poked back Reagan Dalton, one of those senior leaders for this squad. Here's Justina Gaynor, our key player. And that was a good job to get the takeaway for Camille Walker. Andrews kind of go over the top of Welker right there. Bounces out, Gaynor's gonna throw it right back in towards that box. Michigan State trying to be aggressive. They wanna get that two nil lead and feel good about this second half. Would be an awesome start out of the locker room. Slipping again was Lavovich. She kinda slipped earlier and whiffed on the ball. Almost turned into a big opportunity. She then had an unsporting Yellow card after that. Trying to stop that breakaway opportunity. Samantha carries our other key player going into this one we were looking at. Trying to work back to that far side. Obviously with the two sides switching, they, Michigan State likes to now attack that far side. It was the near side for when Michigan State was shooting to the right. Here's Reagan Cox. They love to go to her. Trying to work around Carey right now. Enter into the box, punched up in the air. Just a little bit too far from Justina Gaynor. She was lurking near side of the net. A lot of contact right there as Illig 
and Ellie Otto go down. Foul's going to go against Otto right there. You can see it's been very physical so far in this one. Right there, another one. Eliado, team leader in points, tied at the top, 5'5", five, five junior with the foul right there. Here's Michigan State. Mueller towards that middle. Trying to work far side to Cox. She's being pressured, double teamed at the moment, and then Iowa gets the takeaway. Sophia Bush, the midfielder right there. and Back towards that far side, trying to keep it in. Iowa does. Good work from the Hawkeyes. Justina Gaynor's gonna chase that down, play it back to her back line. Illig, freshman last year when Michigan State was able to be Big Ten champs for the first time and now she's got an opportunity to do it again as a sophomore. To the far corner, that's MJ Andrews. She came off the bench, got the start in the second half. She's a good player for Michigan State. Working around her defender into the box. For pressure from behind was really fueling it. It was Greer that was putting the issue on her. Here's back to Reagan Cox. Trying to work to that far side. Over the head of the goalkeeper, Ennin King. And Justina Gaynor is going to end up with it. Good move. She's inside the box towards that middle. Looking for Najira, but another good defensive play right there from Iowa, that was Pattinson. And right back to Gaynor, threat is not done. Towards that middle again, looking for MJ Andrews. There's Najira from far out, makes it to nail Michigan State on championship Sunday. The Spartans with a big lead to nail now. They gotta feel good early in the second half. Yo, Owen. I'd be interested to see what the conversations at halftime look like because Michigan State came out hot. Bella Najera has been awesome all season long. The freshman from St. Charles, Illinois. She's been named the Big Ten Freshman of the Week for the third time this season. The only freshman in Spartan history to ever earn that many honors. And you can see why right there. Najera puts an exclamation mark right now on this game. Seventh goal of the year. Been unreal. Justina Gaynor is going to be credited with another assist, as well as MJ Andrews. Najera once again tapping it back to her back line. And now for Iowa, you got to go. This is a spot where you need to come back and what would you do if you're a Hawkeye right now? I was in an uncomfortable position right now, you know, they're working from behind. There's still 40, there's still plenty of time left, don't get me wrong, soccer, all the time in the world, they have all the time in the world. But you also have to feel that urgency though too. I mean, there's still plenty of time, but you don't want to run out of time either. This is gonna be an interesting spot for the Hawkeyes. They only have one shot on goal, five shots total. Caitlin Parks has been flawless so far. One save. Good boot towards that middle. Headed up into the air. Parks trying to chase it down. Goes out. There's a lot of contact right inside that box. Nonetheless, once again, just a big crowd of Michigan State Spartans. Nil early in the second half. It was Maggie Illick in that first half. And you get a look, still scoreless at the moment between Wisconsin and Penn State. They're, they're still early in that second half. And you get a look at Northwestern Rutgers. Rutgers currently up, who is the seventh seed, and Northwestern's that number nine seed, top eight make it. Still a chance that they can make it in. You can look at Nebraska, that game's basically over. As Nebraska will be Big Ten regular season champs, but Michigan State looking to join them as well at the top. 
No shots on goal still for the Nittany Lions. Offensively, they haven't gotten anything going, but Michigan State has done a really nice job today. Got some contact right outside the box right there. This could be a good opportunity for Iowa. You see Labovich getting tied up right there. It was Eliado. So if you're Iowa, what are you trying to do in this situation, Lexi? This is a dangerous position. This is shooting range for Iowa. Indeed it is, and this could be a good, ex a good turning point to try to split the lead after allowing an early goal in the second half. Here's Maggie Johnston towards that middle. Good boot, but it's too far. Just trying to get some contact towards the middle, just could not get a deflection. It's gonna be a missed opportunity from the Hawkeyes. You, you just don't know how many more you're gonna get in this game. From Michigan State, Jeff Hosler, you talked about what they probably talked about at halftime, but I mean, the message had to be the same as it's been all season of Hey, we're gonna keep our foot on the gas pedal. We're gonna get those opportunities and defensively, we're gonna do exactly what we've done all last season and all this season because Michigan State has really made their presence felt and it's been the two sophomores that have scored for the Spartans as well. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. They did set the, the bar above and beyond from last year's season. Reagan Cox throwing in to Gavin Mueller. Trying to turn that corner towards that middle. Taps it to Najira, and she gets her pocket picked. Here comes Maggie Johnston. Trying to go far side, Iowa working quickly. Trying to get inside that box, and Reagan Dalton was right there defensively, but then Bush was able to rip it away. Iowa gets it back. Big boot from far out, easy play for Parks. Just not a shot that's really going to go in in many situations. Just a little bit too far out, but Reagan Dalton, nice defensive play from just outside the box. It's going to go out with that goal kick. It's just going to reset up Iowa in their attacking third. We're going to have. Mimi Hallier coming in in a moment for Michigan State. Looks like the subs will come in for the Spartans. Emerson Sargent is also gonna come in for the Michigan State Spartans. Andrews is gonna come out. Did add of an assist already, that second goal for MSU. We talked about how deep this MSU team is. That's what they've been doing all season long and they're doing it today. And a lot of different subs out there. Iowa currently that eight seed. Booted towards the Iowa bench. Goes off of Gaynor, popped up. 50-50 opportunity, Iowa is gonna get it back. Pattinson looking near side towards that Big Ten logo. There's Johnston. So it bounces off a couple of bodies. Good work from the Hawkeyes, but then Michigan State gets it right back. Hallier was on top of that one. Shoved down was Emerson Sargent. That's happened to her a couple times as well. Sargent, another one of those sophomores. Honestly, the story of the game has been the leadership of the players like Justina Gaynor and Reagan Dalton, but then the offensive production as well from Maggie Illig and Ron and, some, um, and also star freshman Najera as well. So those youngsters and underclassmen has really made their presence felt. And you talk about the Michigan State side, but Iowa, they also welcome 16 newcomers, including three freshmen, or 13 freshmen, excuse me. Yeah, and they're a young squad as well. And for Michigan State, 
they just have that opportunity to plug in those youngsters in spots like this where they can work their way up and make an immediate presence, but also have that veteran leadership around. And for Iowa, they're a younger team. Trying to work through. A four year growth process. Yeah, work through some growing pains. And you look, you gotta make sure to check us out on Wednesday, Michigan State basketball between Hillsdale. It's an exhibition game. You gotta make sure to check Zach Sardenic out on the call as Mueller, kind of a missed shot right there. Weird spin as it spun away and got to go to basketball practice a couple days ago and they are a good team, that is for sure. Make sure to check us out on Big Ten Plus for that one on Wednesday. Iowa trying to methodically work towards midfield. Justina Gaynor all over. That's Leeds. It's been a physical game. Sophia Bush. It just seems like Michigan State able to clog those passing lanes at the moment for Iowa. There's Cox on top of that one. This one's gonna be blown dead. Hawkeyes is going to get us a couple subs in in a moment. And for Michigan State, obviously up to no. Job isn't finished yet. And either way, they're going to be in the Big Ten tournament. What are the keys to success for them, do you feel like, in order to make a run? I think they just need to keep doing what they've been doing all year. You know, be a, being an offensive threat is not new for them. Yeah. That's not new for them. Being a brick wall on the defensive line is not new for them. There's not a ton of holes that you can pick out on this team. What they cannot do is lose that composure. Yeah, and obviously they were able to, well, the title game last year did fall though. They want to win it all. That would be a, a great point. And then, move on to the NCAA tournament with an exclamation mark. Obviously all, all their goals still in front of them at the moment. Out in front, that one just once again, not on net at the moment. Iowa's been off target, two shots on goal. Have a couple substitutions for the Hawkeyes as well. Twenty-seven and a half minutes to play in the second half. Maya Schuler is going to come back in. Five-six junior from Northville. One of the couple players on this Michigan on the Iowa team from Michigan. Sparks can go near side. Good work to keep that in was Hallier. Now she's being swarmed by defenders. For Iowa, we talked about how clock continues to tick. Offensively, what do you have to do to, is it more pressing? Is it, is it, is it are you really gonna change your game plan? I think you answered that when you said they were swarmed by players because we have seen them be more man marking. They're trying to man mark right now, which is what you wanna do when you're down two nothing. Yep, and they're really trying to force that issue. Michigan State just defensively has been, we talked about before, but a brick wall. And those couple shots that Iowa's had, they have seven shots, only two on goal though. If Iowa can keep applying pressure and force those turnovers, it can work out in their favor as well. Indeed. And work far side. Good work right there. Zoe Bessert. And this one, once again, we'll go back to MSU.
just did go out. Good work by the replay right there. Vargas winless transfers, we talked about before, but the transfers and newcomers mixed in with the old squad of Michigan State, the ones that know how to win, have really done it well today. As it looks like, I believe that's Justina Gaynor down at the moment. Slow to get up. She's a tough player though. Came from underneath her right there. Looked like Johnston. She's gonna shake it off. I mean, she is a physical player. And this has been a really physical game too. 13 fouls for Iowa, 10 for Michigan State. On top of that, when it's cold like this, everything hurts worse. Yeah. Getting hit by that ball is a pain that I can't even describe. Yeah, no, for sure. Whoa, slipping there was Parks. It did rain a lot yesterday. It did, and they also like to water reapply the, the water before, yep, with the sprinkler. We've seen it before. Usually it's on that near side that's been kind of an issue. Good work by Jordan Wickes. Gets it back from Michigan State into the box. Working around defender Carey. And then Iowa's able to get it right back with Josie Durr. Good work right there by Jordan Wickes trying to produce something. And it seems like Michigan State's ball handling is really good as well. Their footwork, a couple players can really make a move on you. I think the between the foot skills and speed combined, it's it's a good duo. Yeah, and Gabby Mueller is a player towards that middle too, has a ton of speed for MSU. There's a bunch of players that Cox can really turn Cox is a big one on. as well. Yep. She's able to go all the way from the defensive end, create an overlap play, create a 2v1 on the outside. And also the grid of Justina Gaynor is Unreal too, and all those kind of things combined can really make a championship roster. It's Northwestern and Rutgers is now tied one to one in that second period. So that's something to look out for for Iowa. We're gonna stop the clock. Native of Gross Point, Michigan. So once again, another Hawkeye back in her home state. Justina Gaynor trying to get it inside that box. She's got a couple assists already today. Two points for her. She's our key player and she's really stepped up in a big way. Reagan Dalton as well has been big. Hasn't st showed up necessarily on that score sheet, but she's really made her presence felt defensively as well as leadership wise. I think one of the words you used was grit, and I think that's a great way to describe those players. And they've been in these situations before. They've been in these big games, and it's that kind of calming presence of, hey, we're, yeah, we've been good all season long, and this is our chance to really prove what we're made of and to ultimately possibly hold up that trophy when this game is done would be a feeling that you're never going to forget the rest of your life. And when you got a couple players with that type of mentality, it spreads throughout all 11 yep. of them. Mm -hmm. And all you need is a couple, and they definitely have those as well. As players like Wickes, Dalton, Cox, all been there before. I mean, we've talked so much about team chemistry, and that's one good example of a team with that type of contagious, con like, contagious energy. Yeah, and then, you, like we talked about already, but transfers, rookie, mm -hmm. freshmen, mm -hmm. all coming in, making their part as you had to fill in for Kozel and all those other players that big moved shoes. on. Yep, it's it's a big role to fill, especially when you lose your, your captains as well and your leadership. It's, hey, this is our chance to step up if you're a junior moving up or a grad student to be able to come in here and be a leader because they don't have captains and they have an opportunity to lead without that C on their jersey. There's Wickes with it. Trying to work her along that near side, right around her defender. And Iowa was on top of that one. Emerson Sargent was trying to chase it down. She got the start today for MSU. 
was in and out of that starting lineup last year, but as a freshman, she was that freshman that stepped up in a big way, and now it's been Najera for Michigan State this year, and she's already got a goal today. And for Iowa, not all hope is lost yet. Game's far from over, but you do need some urgency. We've seen it already. One goal can really turn the game in a, in a moment and split this lead. There's Dalton, physical battle once again right there between Kelly McGordy and Reagan Dalton. Right there. Good work, Dalton, getting in front of that one. You can see the frustration as well. What Iowa can't do is allow that frustration to get the best of them in this game because, like you said, it's yep. far from over. You're going to have that mindset too, but that's also where if you don't have those players that are going to step up and say, hey, we're, we're fine, this, this is good, let's settle down, then you might not feel that way. And Michigan State has those kind of players out there, has been in those kind of big games. Obviously, you do have some leaders out there, but we talked about Iowa does have a younger more unexperienced roster than Michigan State. They've done a, a good job to put themselves in a, a position to still be in it on the last day for the Big Ten tournament. And that's obviously their goal, to continue their season. I think what you said, settle down is the best possible best solution right now just to maintain the ball look for feet find the open passes you don't need to rush right now you still have 20 minutes it's it's more of a calm urgency mm -hmm. to you is how mm -hmm. i would describe it of yes we need a goal but hey we're not going to go from what we we know what to do in this kind of situation when you practice you've been in this for other games as well that whatever formula has worked before you're going to go back to it Throw in. It's going to squirt away. Iowa's going to recontrol it. Under 20 left in this game. Here's Illig fighting for it for Michigan State. I was trying to work backwards. Good work by Hallier right there. Wickes then gets shoved down. There's the foul. That's a good defensive sequence right there for the Spartans. It's Pattinson right there. She's been a big factor for Iowa today. You see right there, Wickes. We've seen that a lot from Iowa where Michigan State's to the ball first, that speed beat them there, and then that contact leads to the foul. You can see right there, 17 fouls to Michigan State's 11. Right, and like I mentioned, they can't let that get the best of them right now. That frustration, that trying to come up from behind. And frustration can definitely build up if you're Iowa, but get a look at that. Still scoreless between Penn State and Wisconsin. 70-42 in that second half. Once again, Iowa, or Penn State has not lost this season, but they do have three draws in conference play. This fourth one would be a big one. So once again, you can just see those Dirt marks all over Justina Gaynor because she's been sliding all over the place and she's been putting her body on the line. One of those leaders from Michigan State right there. Right again, Justina Gaynor just all over the place. Inside that box. It's going the other way. Foul against Emerson Sargent. And just quickly looking at the stats for Penn State, Wisconsin, four shots on goal for Penn State, seven for Wisconsin, but still scoreless. And if you're a Michigan State fan, that's all you want. Popped up in the air, going to roll towards the near side for Iowa as Pattinson crawling forward. 
Going to look for that near corner. Good defensive play right there by the Spartans. And they get it right back. Gabby Mueller. Trying to find Wickes towards that near side. Sargent instead will go collect it. She's going to turn that corner. Good opportunity into the box. Can she make it 3-0? And she gets taken from behind. Looks like it's going to be Celia Gaynard to take this PK opportunity for the Spartans. She's been all good all season long. Good opportunity for her to make it 3-0. Put an exclamation mark on this game. Towards that middle, 3-0 MSU on championship Sunday. The Spartans have put themselves in the spot to possibly win the Big Ten regular season. As that goes in, you gotta think, co-champs is on the mind of everybody here at DeMartin Field. So Celia Gaynor, 5'8", grad student from Shelby Township. Her sister, Justina Gaynor, has been fantastic. She's been good as well. Another goal for the Spartans, too. Celia gets the spot. She only had one goal before, but now that's her second, and it's a big one. If you're Iowa, you got to go. Rutgers has taken a 2-1 lead over Northwestern as well. Still scoreless between Penn State and Wisconsin. 3-0 here. You got to think if you're Michigan State, you got to feel good about this game. But you're starting to scoreboard watch those other games as well. We'll keep you updated on those. 18 fouls for Iowa. And I mean, that it's been a physical game, but those fouls starting to rack up, and that was a costly last one. Michigan State defensively has been so good, they get it back. Sinhaji towards that near side and turn it over. Fifteen forty-five left in this one. Penn State game just a little bit behind this one here in East Lansing, so they could be waiting a moment to see if they are officially Big Ten champs. Nebraska is going to be at the top either way. It's just about being co-Big Ten champs if you're the green and white. Booted towards that middle box right there. Popped up in the air. Good defensive stop again. It looked like Celia Gaynor was in on that. But ahead on that one and rolling. It's going to go to that corner throw in. Methodically moving in. Bush. Good work by Parks going to a knee. Almost looked like a hockey goalie right there going, making that save. And that's what I mean when I say, you know, have faith in your goalie for, for incidents yep. like those. And... I would say in that situation, I don't know about you, but I think it's a lot easier to make that save compared to a PK opportunity where mm -hmm. you get to really think through it. You got the opportunity to rest and everything and take that shot, and that's exactly what happened. Confidence just was not there. Maybe that's something they'll adjust moving forward. Here's Gabby Mueller trying to fight for it. It will go out and right in front of that Iowa bench. Coming in today, to today, we just want to remind you, Michigan State, if they win and Penn State loses or draws, they're co-Big Ten champs. Nebraska is going to be that other champ as well as that game's over. It's 4-1 to one there. Trying to move towards that middle. Good defensive work right there from Hallier. She got the start today. Top of that one. Once again was Mia Hansen, transfer from Grand Valley State. I mean, it's hard to pick out a player that's meant the most today for MSU. 
because they've had so many different players step up in a big way. We talked about, obviously, Celia Gaynor just scored. Earlier, it was Maggie Illick. And then that second goal was from their star freshman, Bella Najera. Yeah, I mean, you've talked about it a couple of times, just having those players be able to come off the bench and still be impactful and still make an immediate change in the game. Like, that's huge. Yeah. They're a really deep team going into this postseason. Only one that was not able to go today was Mackenzie Anthony. Obviously, she wishes she was able to play in today's game, but nonetheless, we'll be able to celebrate. Is that one towards the middle? It was Justina Gaynor, I believe, that got her head on it. You can or see Celia, I think it was. You can see Iowa putting all their numbers for it. I mean, no one is on the Iowa half. Yep. Annan King, their keeper, is almost at the border of their attacking third as well. Gonna have some substitutions in a moment as well. Got a corner kick coming from Schuler. Jordan Wickes is gonna come back in, so is Sophia Petrowski. She's another freshman that's gotten some good playing time. Good entry towards that box. Pumped up in the air and it will be blown dead. So Anna King's gonna retreat a little bit. Pressure's still gonna be on from the Hawkeyes, but with 12 minutes remaining, it's tough to get three goals. Two one Rutgers late in that one and still some time, but Wisconsin and Penn State still scoreless. Gonna roll it back over to Schuler. Trying to get back inside that box. Justina Gaynor's there. There's Mia Hansen. Just gonna get rid of that one. Towards that corner. Bush was looking for rolling and just carries out. So it's fought four and one by Iowa. 10.50 to go in this one. Got to remind everyone that there is no overtime. And Bush trying to get around Parks. Good work again. Parks has just been fantastic. Fourth save today for her. Just going to get a couple more. Opportunities to get some more saves as this one dwindles down. Another sub for Iowa is going to come in. Really starting to empty them their bench for them. Two to one, Rutgers up. Is that one still going on? Fought four in the box, and Mia Hansen's going to. Give Iowa another throw in. Under 10 in this game. Good defensive play right there by Wickes. Putting the pressure on. There's Gabby Mueller. Fought four, Iowa's gonna roll it back. Towards that box, good opportunity out in front. And Dalton's gonna boot it out of the box. Good work right there. Here comes Gabby Mueller. On the, we talked about her speed. Here's another one opportunity for her and it's gonna go right to the defender. Also, Wisconsin has taken a one nil lead. That is massive right there if you're a Michigan State fan. Time is on your side here and there at the moment. It's either a draw or a loss. Penn State has not lost all season. And obviously they're a very good team, but for Michigan State, they've been in this spot before. Hansen went down. 
More subs coming in for Iowa in a moment. Right there. I mean, Samantha Carey just has not been as big of a factor as she usually is. It's just because of how good Michigan State has been both offensively and defensively. And I think it's hard because, you know, it does take all 11 players. And when some aren't giving the same amount of energy as the others, it makes it really hard for players like Samantha Carey. It's going to go back out to midfield. Eight minutes. Justina Gaynor going to play it back towards that corner. In a year that Michigan State coming into this one had the pressure of everyone looking at them. They were expected to finish around the third spot in the Big Ten in the preseason polls and now an opportunity to prove the haters wrong once again. Co-Big Ten title on the line right now. Nebraska's already got a share of that. And Michigan State trying to get the other side of it. Jordan Wickes, 7.20 left to play in this game. Gonna roll out. Gainer. When those leaders, once again, her and her sister have been fantastic for Michigan State. She has one of those goals on the PK opportunity. It's championship Sunday, six and a half minutes remaining. For Michigan State, this is really just a matter of running out the clock. Yeah. For Iowa, you just want to get on the board. Yeah, I mean, at this moment, your season isn't quite over yet. And I think what we have to consider is that regardless of what happens next, this could possibly be the last regular season game for some of these girls. Absolutely, and you got to have that as we do have a final between Rutgers and Northwestern. Rutgers takes that one two to one. Cox is going to boot it away. I was going to stop momentarily. As they're going to pull Anna King out. Or they're just going to pull her out from the box and use her. They're going to use a different, different sub right there. That's Skibbo. Once again, inside that box, Michigan State has been fantastic, not allowing any opportunities. And for MSU, this season, besides that early Colorado loss, I mean, they had a tough loss against Notre Dame out of conference, and then once conference play started, they just went on a roll. Once again, they did fall to Penn State here, three to one, but then when they needed to step up, they got those points and those wins. So that one be blown dead right there. But it was a tie against number 25, Indiana, wins against Rutgers, and Illinois win against Michigan as well. See that contact. McGordy right there. Be a good opportunity for Iowa to crack that scoreboard. Kelly McGordy right here. That wall of defenders from Michigan State. Parks is ready. Four saves for her already. Can she get another one? Here's McGrory winding up right into that wall of Michigan State defenders. Man, that's got to be scary. Just ball coming right at you as Parks is able to grab that one out of the air. I can't confirm that that is a scary position to be <laughs> in, Owen. I used to have Sam right there in my line. Yeah, that's that takes something else to just stand in there in that position. And we mentioned this earlier, but it, with it being cold and having to take yeah, that hit. Yeah, you're right. It hurts even more. But either way, for 
Mueller, she's going to come out. Labovich is going to come in. We've seen a lot of different subs today, but for Michigan State, about four minutes away from possibly being co-Big Ten champs. And there's two minutes left between Penn State and Wisconsin where the Badgers lead 1-0. So at the moment, this game is actually behind that one just because of the stoppages that we had and a couple of reviews as well. Back inside that box. Gladden gets it out and it's gonna roll all the way down. And once again, Michigan State fighting for it. Illig, she scored earlier. Dalton's gonna boot it away. Again, Michigan State just trying to kill the clock right yep. now. Trying to get it out of the 18. Just over a minute remaining. As it looks like Penn State is going to fall for the first time this season. And also worth noting that Michigan State would be in line for the first seed for the Big Ten tournament. If everything stays the way it is, it would take a miracle at this moment, but for Jeff Hosler and his squad, it's gonna be a celebration time. Do have a trophy here, you get a look at Nebraska, they're gonna lock up that part of the Big Ten title. Michigan State, first time they were able to win the regular season for the conference last season, and. They're looking to do it again. Two minutes and 31 seconds away from doing that. Bunch more subs coming in. As you can see, Labovich wanted to be in there for that final couple of minutes. Talking to her head coach about it. Here's Justina Gaynor. There's Najera, three-time freshman for the week for the Big Ten, and she was able to score as well. You got to make sure to check around, stick around as well, because we're going to have some interviews with some of the players, assuming Michigan State is able to clinch the Big Ten title for this season. Co-Big Ten champs. Going to talk about what it means to this program once again. And those Big Ten tournament seedings and pairings will be released by the conference at the conclusion of today's games as well. That's something else to watch out for, so they're gonna see who they're facing in that first round that they first get. A couple of opportunities for them and clock's gonna continue to run, 120 left. A whole lot of players have made an impact today, but let's run through that summary. It was at the 333 mark that Maggie Illig was able to score. Top left corner off the right foot. Justina Gaynor and Emerson Sargent both got assists as well. Bell and Najera, she was able to score early in that second half, 52-37 mark. Bottom left of the goal, Andre Andrews and Justina Gaynor both assisted on that one and there was PK from Celia Gaynor as we get a final Wisconsin is able to take down Penn State 1-0 so 43 seconds away for Michigan State to be co-Big Ten champs you can see the sideline there are a lot of smiles yep, over there they know it's coming smiles, a lot of smiles a lot of anticipation celebration over there. is coming for Michigan State and 25 seconds, crowd senses it too. Regardless, you can see the Iowa fans yep. standing up, cheering on their girls. Absolutely, and for both sides, what a season it's been. On to the postseason for Michigan State. You can see these players as they're going crazy already with 10 seconds left. I'm gonna run the clock out, let it go. Michigan State and Nebraska are both gonna be 2023 co Big Ten champions. The Spartans do it again, back-to-back -back years where they finish at the top of the Big Ten Conference. 
What a celebration here in East Lansing. On Championship Sunday, they get the job done. Oh, when you talk about a team with a lot of grit and a, uh, have overcome so much adversity, they deserve to have that celebration right now. Jeff Hosler has installed a culture of winning here at Michigan State.